Hello my friends and welcome back to another video here on LBQ. I'll be your host Jared Bronstein and today we'll dive right into the question, what if you skydived into a hurricane? Before we answer that though, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and as always, show us some love in that comment section down below. I'll be replying to some comments from a previous video when we get to the bottom of this question, a question that should only be answered hypothetically. So let me make it clear, do not try to skydive into a hurricane. Now that I am not liable for anyone's actions, let's get into the video. So hurricanes, they're really just a very bad thunderstorm with insanely extreme winds swirling in the same direction. So imagine almost like a tornado mixed with a really heavy thunderstorm only way bigger. And we know the kind of damage they cause. Hurricane Katrina destroyed an entire city, while Hurricane Dorian destroyed most of the Bahamas, an entire country. They vary in regards to how destructive they are with categories ranging from 1, meaning it has winds anywhere between 74 and 95 miles per hour, up to a category 5, which is a major hurricane containing winds of 157 miles per hour and up. But in regards to what would happen if you skydived directly into a hurricane, well, the results don't change much regardless of what category the storm is. Of course, no one has claimed to have skydived into a hurricane, and if anyone has tried, well, unfortunately, I don't think they would have lived to tell the tale. And here's why. For starters, hurricanes can reach heights between 40 and 50,000 feet in altitude. Now, most skydivers, on average, jump anywhere between altitudes of 10,000 to 13,500 feet in the air. Skydiving above altitudes of 15,000 feet require the use of oxygen because we can't breathe that high up in the air. But before you even jump, you'd need a pilot willing to fly through the wall of the hurricane, assuming you wanted to skydive in the eye of the hurricane. This would be a problem because skydiving planes, such as the Cessna 208 Caravan and the Pac P750 Extol, would probably have a tough time dealing with the harsh winds, causing damage to the plane's wings or possibly engine. Now somehow, someway, if you were able to get a pilot who'd be willing to do this, and the plane managed to break through without any issues, and you successfully jumped out of the plane, it wouldn't be smooth sailing. And that's because, as peaceful as the eye of the hurricane is, there's no guarantee that you would dive directly down in a straight line the whole time. You'd be surrounded by clouds, hail, rain, and of course, extremely heavy winds. Now this could lead to you being sucked upward into higher altitudes because of the heavy winds, something that happened to Lieutenant Colonel William Rankin, who had to eject from his F-8 Crusader at 47,000 feet in the air. His aircraft got stuck in a cumulonimbus tower, which is a very dense vertical cloud usually found in thunderstorms. After his jet's engine failed, on him, he decided to eject before he started going into a complete nosedive. Thankfully, he had an oxygen mask which helped him survive the ordeal. With that being said, he wasn't properly equipped with a pressure suit, so when he was sucked to the top of the cloud, we're talking about 47,000 feet in the air, he was surrounded by heavy winds, lightning, hail, rain, and black clouds. And of course, his body was freaking out. He had swelling in his abdomen and blood from every hole imaginable. We're talking his nose, ears, eyes, and mouth. And really, who else knows? Where else? Although he survived to tell the tale, he almost drowned because the water vapor was so thick, when he tried to breathe, he almost choked. His limbs were frostbitten, and even when he was coming to a clearing, expecting to make a safe landing, a gust of wind took him right into a group of trees at the last second, which caused him to smash his head on one of the trunks and have his parachute get caught up in the branches. So, hypothetically, if you were to skydive in a hurricane, not only would you most likely have troubles going straight down as normally would be the case, but you could find yourself being sucked up so high due to the eye of the hurricane's wall that carries heavy winds, you'd have trouble breathing, among many, many other issues. We're talking welts, frostbite, bleeding, and of course, the chance of you being struck by lightning, which would result in an instant death. Now, the eye of a hurricane is incredibly calm and peaceful, but as previously mentioned, the odds of skydiving right down the middle and not being moved any way toward or away from the hurricane's eye wall would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, especially with a parachute. Then there's the landing. You'd have a pretty hard time seeing the ground below you, and when you did, if the eye isn't in a spot where you could land safely, say it's still making its way over the ocean and heading for land, well then you'd have to break through the hurricane's eye wall all alone with just a parachute. This of course would not end well by any means. So to wrap up, let me just say, you probably shouldn't skydive into a hurricane. Aside from the difficulties that you would have finding someone willing to fly you high enough to even get into the eye of the hurricane, which would most likely be the only possible way to not be thrown all over the place, Actually, skydiving straight down the eye would also be impossible. In the end, skydiving into a hurricane, regardless if it was the eye, the wall, or the edge, would almost definitely end up with you dying. Or at least, you know, 
having very severe injuries. How you would die varies from drowning due to the vapors to getting struck by lightning to not having enough oxygen to even having trouble controlling your landing if you made it that far. It's safe to say doing this would be an incredibly bad idea. So just don't do it. Now on that morbid note, let's reply to some comments from the video. How can we stop a hurricane? Just kind of felt it was fitting given this video, you know? Anyway, Russian Vodka said, As Dr. Ishiro Sirizawa once stated, The arrogance of a man is thinking nature is in our control and not the other way around. Circa 1945 to 2019. That's pretty much what I'm saying here. Like, we think, oh, if I skydive down the eye of the hurricane, then I'll go right down. No, you have no idea what's going to happen. There's heavy winds and hurricanes. Even though the eye of the hurricane is very peaceful and calm, Who's to say, you know, while you're skydiving down, although you'd go down pretty quickly, the hurricane wouldn't move, you know, make the winds shift. Hurricanes are constantly moving, the winds are constantly moving. Who's to say that it wouldn't move you in a different direction and then you'd be really screwed? MX Yes said, we need to build a wall around the hurricane and make it pay for it. <laughs> I just included this one because it was a really funny comment. Imagine someone trying to build a wall around a hurricane. I'll just leave you guys with that imagery. Little Drummer Boy said, you can't stop Mother Nature. She will find a way to bounce back for revenge. Again, kind of going off that first comment that I replied to, yeah, I mean, you know, we think we're the most intelligent beings, but we're not. Like, we think we could control Mother Nature, but, I mean, not to say we think we can, but, I don't know. Like, how can we stop a hurricane? You can't. It's a natural disaster. The world's gonna do what it's gotta do, regardless of how we feel about it, so... You know, there's only so much we can do. And a great quote that I live by, guys, it says, a secret to happiness is letting every situation be what it is instead of what you think it should be. So just think about that, I guess. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. Give this video a thumbs up. And of course, ask us some questions in the comments right down below. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein, and we'll speak to you guys soon.